Below us is a residential area in a medium-sized... Most of the people have a common problem. During an average day, many of them have to travel to some other part. Some travel to the downtown section to work or do business at the stores and offices located there. Many make the trip in private automobiles and leave their cars in parking lots. But not everyone who needs to travel from one part of the city to another has a car available to make the trip. These people are often dependent for transportation on the work of the... See you, Charlie. Have a good day, George. George Staley starts work early in the morning. He's a bus driver, and this is the garage where the buses are kept. A mechanic started Mr. Staley's bus 10 minutes ago, so that now the motor is warmed up and the bus is ready to go. Morning, Jack. Morning, Mr. Staley. But there are several things Mr. Staley must do before his day's run. First, he fixes his coin changer in place. Then he prepares transfers. These are for passengers who ride partway on his bus, then change to another bus to finish their trip. These are bus tokens. Passengers who ride the bus regularly can save money by buying a supply of tokens and using them to pay for their rides. Mr. Staley will not pick up any passengers until he reaches his scheduled route on Lincoln Boulevard. Mr. Staley's bus is 40 feet long. Empty, it weighs more than nine tons. It's powered by a 200 horsepower diesel engine. It can carry 75 passengers. Mr. Staley reaches his Lincoln Boulevard route a few blocks from the garage, about halfway between downtown and the end of the line in the suburbs. Mr. Staley's first passenger each morning is usually Judy Mason, a night shift waitress in a 24-hour restaurant. Good morning, George. Morning, Judy. I missed you yesterday. Got off early. Bob Johnson and Michael Phelps work on the night shift at a factory. They also depend on the bus to get home in the morning. Bob takes a transfer because he has to change to a bus on another route in order to reach his home. Judy Mason is almost home. So she pulls the buzzer cord to signal Mr. Staley to let her off at the next bus stop. Mr. Staley must unlock the rear door before anyone can get off. The doors are always kept locked while the bus is moving. This is where Bob Johnson transfers to a bus on another route. The bus schedules are carefully planned to make it easy for passengers to transfer to connecting lines. Bob doesn't need cash or a token to pay for this ride, just the transfer. Mr. Staley's bus has reached the end of the line in the suburbs. This is where he turns around to start his trip back into town. At this hour of the morning, he carries only a few people from downtown out to the suburbs, but there will be many people waiting to ride inbound do their jobs in offices, stores, and factories. Many of these people are regular passengers on Mr. Staley's bus. Morning, Frank. How's the new baby? Just fine, thanks. That's good. Hi, George. Morning, Sally. Morning, Jim. 
Bought that new house yet? Sure did. Won't be riding much longer. Oh, we'll miss you. Morning, Bill. Morning. I need some more tokens, George. Okay, Susan. Coming right up. Morning, Chuck. Where's Dave? He had the night shift. Oh, I was just afraid I'd miss him. It's time to go. After several more stops, the bus is full. This is where some of Mr. Staley's passengers get off. These people all work in this plant. The rest of Mr. Staley's early morning passengers work downtown in offices or stores. As the day progresses, Mr. Staley picks up many kinds of passengers. During the school year, many students ride his bus. The bus company has special rates for students and sells them cards good for 10 rides. Tommy. Do you want to walk to school today? No, Mr. Staley. I'm sorry. Keeping order on his bus at all times is an important part of Mr. Staley's job. And it's the job of the students, as well as all the other riders on the bus, to help him keep order. After the morning rush hour is over, Mr. Staley's bus carries lighter loads of passengers. Most of his passengers now are shoppers or people going visiting. Mr. Staley is always ready to help passengers with special problems. And he can always wait a few seconds for a last minute passenger. After all, serving the public is Mr. Staley's most important job. In the offices of the bus company, men are also at work serving the public. A new factory has opened along one of the bus routes and there will have to be an increase in service to provide transportation for the men and women who will work there. The solution to the problem may be to buy more buses. Or perhaps the buses the company already has can be rescheduled to provide more service. Either way, more bus drivers will be needed. Mr. Franklin, the company's senior driver, is training several men who have applied for job bus drivers. Driving a heavy bus through traffic requires a great deal of skill, as well as constant alertness to avoid accidents caused by mistakes made by other drivers. This is Mr. Staley's last run of the day. A second shift of drivers will take over the Lincoln Boulevard route for the afternoon rush hour and for traffic in the evening. Mr. Staley will carry no passengers on his drive back to the garage. The day is also over for Mr. Staley's bus. Crews of maintenance men will work on it overnight to get it ready for tomorrow's run. Mr. Staley leaves his bus at the fueling rack where its tanks will be filled with diesel fuel. Later, his bus will be washed on the outside and vacuumed inside. and any repairs will be made that are needed to have the bus in top running condition when Mr. Staley sees it again tomorrow morning. Lee is through for the day. He's going home. He'll ride a bus, as do thousands of other people in his community who take it for granted to the right place at the right time.